In today's video, we're going to use this image of a physical model as an inspiration to create a similar replica with V-Ray. We'll show you how to easily recreate the same lighting conditions and materials in case you're not able to create a physical model itself. The project that we're going to focus on here is a conceptual project that won second place in an architectural competition for Shanghai World Expo in 2010. The project was designed by Antin and Oiva Architects from Finland. Once I googled them, I found a couple of exciting projects, mostly public buildings and libraries. Let's talk a little bit about the lighting in this image. The model was placed on a table and we have the wooden base we have the wooden elements on the inside and then this white material on the outside so we're going to try to replicate the same kind of feel from the image i can see that this is most probably a regular daylight and you can see that the light is coming from the left side we have the shadow on the right and then we have some shadows here being cast from this wood and also from these elements so we're going to try to recreate the same type of lighting from the left but also i'm going to show you some other options as well so first thing, let's set up the lights. I'm going to go to the V-Ray here and let's just see what would be the default option that we will get. So I'm going to try it here to do progressive rendering and you will see here that we're going to get completely black result, which means that there is no light source. So let's just create one simple light source. I'm going to use a regular rectangle light here and I will create a light here. Let's put it like this and I'm going to orient it, let's say minus 45 and I'm going to also rotate it this way, let's say 45 and I'm going to bring this up so that it seems like it's going from this side. Now let's see the result that we would get. If we press render now, we got the light source from the left side. However, there is nothing else in the scene. There's only this geometry and that's why everything else is completely black. Now let's try to add some additional things. I'm going to try to add here infinite plane so that we have some better results with our image. Once you click on render, you will see that we're going to get the ground. However, now we need to deal with this intensity. So let's lower this down. I'm going to go from 100 to let's say 10. And let's see the result. You will see that we're going to get much softer results, much softer shadows. So now it's about tweaking this light and actually trying to get the intensity that would work for us. So let's try, for example, 40, something like this might work. And first also I want to position my scene. I want to position my camera just to get an idea of how that would look like. In order to light everything up, Usually what I like to do, I like to use HDRI image. So now let's open up Chaos Cosmos and let's find some HDRI images here. I'm going to click on HDRIs and here I will pick, for example, day and let's see what we get. And usually for this type of effect, I would go for some softer shadows because we have the other light source as well in the scene. So I would go for something like this. I would click here. I would download this HDRI and now let's put it inside going to click here and you will see that I'm gonna get this HD right here. So all I need to do is click on the dome light. I would position it here. I don't need to pick any files because I already have the file here and I will simply go here, right click, copy and then go to the dome light and place it here. Paste as copy. Now we have the HDR image inside and of course we need to play with the intensity here. It seems like it's too bright. But before we make any conclusions, let's test this. Let's go to the render and now let's see. Obviously, it's too bright. Let's go back. Let's change this to 0.1. Once we change this, you will see that we're going to get much different result. However, this is still not ideal. We also need to lower down the rectangle light intensity. Let's go with one. Currently, this looks too blue to me. So what I would do, I would go here to the dome light. I would go to the texture and under color gain, we can reduce this. And as soon as you reduce the color, you will see that you will get more a grayish look, the one that we are looking for. You see that we have already the soft shadows and now we also have the rectangular light, which we turned on. If you increase it, of course, you would get that different light effect from the side. So now it's a matter of kind of testing this and seeing what type of result would work the best. So now if you take a look at this image, we are only looking at the shadows. You can see how we created those type of shadows that we have here. I would say that they're quite similar. Of course, you can always modify this and change this. And if you take a look at this light, we can of course scale the light that would affect our shadows as well. For example, if I do here gumball alignment to object and I scale this, look at the shadows. 
you'll see how the shadows will change because the lighting is bigger. And the way that the light is being affected is because its size is also being changed. That means that we're going to get different types of shadows here. So based on that, and of course, based on the distance, you can also get the different results. For the materials, let's go to the V-Ray options and let's go here under the generic. Let's create a new material and let's just call it white. This will be the material for the outside of our building. And let's change the color to something, something whitish like this. Let's of course apply that material and let's test it. Let's see the result. You can see that we get a kind of grayish material because it's not completely white. That's totally fine for now. I also like to duplicate this material and also like to change the ground. This will be ground and the material of the ground is usually a bit darker than what we have for the for this one. So this white material we can increase a little bit and then what I like to do, I like to copy this to the ground here, paste, and then I can slightly just change that tint, okay? And now when we click the ground, let's change the material there as well you will see that we're gonna get that difference here it's not gonna be exactly the same but it would feel the same when it comes to the wood material we need to select the bottom part and let's go to the chaos cosmos again and let's find some proper material here under the wood we can find a lot of interesting materials and i think this wood would look great put it in the scene and let's go and check it out how it would work here it is and what we can do, we can simply apply this, apply to selection. And now you will see the change there being reflected live. However, now this image looks a little bit too dark. So what I would do, I would go here and I would change the, the dome light. Let's change this from 0 0.1 to 0 0.15. Let's see the result. You can see that it's already a bit brighter. We can even increase it to 0 0.2. I would also like to test the edge to our images that I have just to get an idea if we would get a better result. So let's go here. Let's select this one and let's see what the result would be in this case. And let's of course put it back. So this edge zero image is giving me better results because it's giving me nicer shadows and the colors are much better. So we're going to use this one from now on. But it's good to know, of course, that you can use the ones from Chaos Cosmos if you like them. Now let's take a look at our render and let's compare it. Right now, yeah, we're quite close, but I think that we need to increase uh, the reflectivity of this material. And also we need to change the tint as well of this wood. Let's zoom in a bit here and let's check to see if we have the proper mapping applied. Yeah, so it seems like we need to correct the mapping as well. So the way that you would fix the mapping here is we need to select the object. We need to go here under properties and then under texture mapping. And let's choose here in this case box mapping and let's apply the box. For example, let's do five by five. And once we click enter, you will see that now this texture is going to look a little bit different. And of course, if you modify that box, the texture is also going to be modified. So if I change this, you will see how this texture is going to move. And if I scale this, let's say I scale it five times, you will see how this pattern is going to be enlarged and visible much more. In this case, this is too much. So of course, I want to scale this down 0 0.01, let's say. And there we go. Once the mapping is done, we can proceed to modify this other material. And I would create this rectangle that we have in the file. And let's bring this up. And I would also move the whole thing so that we have the same type of image as this one. And by looking at this, I think we're quite close. Maybe it needs to be shorter on this side and also on the other one. So I would scale it just a tiny bit here and I would position it probably here in the middle and then scale it on this side like so. And now, of course, this has separate materials. So again, let's go to Chaos Cosmos. Let's pick, for example, this import. And now we can use this other material for the bottom piece. Let's use, here it is, light selection. And here I'm also going to use the same method. I will apply the box mapping and I would create the map so that we have the proper result. And you can see if I zoom in that we can see the mapping of this wood. Now it's difficult to get exactly the same wood material like this one 
but maybe if you play with the scaling of the mapping widget you might get a little bit better result. Okay now let's take a look at these materials a bit if you can modify them slightly. I think they should be much wider as you can see here. So I'm going to go to the material. First let's go to this wider one and let's go here. Let's go to color manipulation and let's play with the color offset. This would give us that wider look as you can see here. So that's how I would control it. If I zoom in better, you will see. And let's do the same thing for the with the other wood. Let's go there. Color manipulation, color offset. And that's how we would get that feel. You can even see the bumps here on this one. And let's see the result. Quite happy with it. But I still think we need to modify this white material. I think it should be a bit whiter. So I'm going to go to the white one. And I will increase just a tiny bit. Like, and I would increase the reflection. I think it should be more reflective. So that it gets that same look. Alright, so this is the raw result that we got from our frame buffer. So now I'm going to render this in high resolution. And then we'll go to Photoshop to enhance it even more. And let me just compare them. So you can see that this one is a lot, I would say, warmer on this side. So it has a little bit more contrast. So that's what we're going to try to do now. I will start, for example, with curves layer. I'm also going to start with levels and exposure. So let's go to the curves. In here, I will just create a slight curve. With the exposure, I would increase it just a tiny bit. So I have a little bit more light. And with the levels, I would actually move it towards this side to have, and then probably push it on this side as well to have this area darkened a bit. Okay, once we're happy with that, what I like to do, I like to put all of these guys on the new layer. And we can do this by holding Shift, Control, Alt, and pressing E. That would uh, make a new layer here with all the adjustments. And then I would add Hue and Saturation Adjustment Layer. I would put this one with create clipping mask, so it's only going to affect the layer below. And I would colorize it in some kind of yellowish color, for example, something like this. Let's do something like this, okay? And then I would merge these two. I would merge them, and then I would use soft light blend mode. And you can see already how different the result is. Of course, I would lower this down until something like this. And I would make a mask here. I would use the paint bucket tool. I would put it to black and click here. And now we can simply use the paintbrush tool, switch it to white and then paint the areas that we want to affect. So I would only paint this front part. So I would simply go a couple of times like this and you will see that I'm going to be painting that effect. This means that now this side is a little bit brighter than this side is a little bit darker. And here is the final result. You can see before and you can see after. Here it is. And this is also our image. As far as the model of the project, I've actually modeled the whole project using subject tools and it took me around one hour to complete everything. So if you're interested to check that out, it's available on our Patreon page. And with that, you'll get access to all of our other extended tutorials and project files so you can follow along. The link is in the description. If you'd like to know exactly how to create complex projects like these, and if you're interested in step-by-step -step learning approach, starting from zero, make sure to check our Grasshopper Complete course, where you'll find over 60 hours of video material structured in a form of video library, covering in depth more than 500 Grasshopper components through practical examples. And you'll have access to us personally, so we can answer all of your questions right away. The link is in the description.